in the nature of capitalism, the ability to create value and, and wealth, but also there's the creative destruction, which is how it creates value. Um, now, in the book, you discuss some very positive actions you took as governor, uh, compassionate actions, to help those equip, you know, 40 farmers. Can you expand on ideas how the U.S. can save free trade from its critics while minimizing its adverse distributional consequences? Yeah, I think it's important to underscore something, which is that, that uh, economists and business people can, can acknowledge mm -hmm. that creative destruction does enhance productivity and raise the standards of living of the people of a society. Mm -hmm. That sounds great, mm -hmm. except creative destruction does not sound real good if it happens to you. And, and, there are, uh, and, and for, for an economy to thrive, and uh, as ours does, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who, who will suffer as a result of that. Losing a job, I don't know how many in the room here have lost a job. Losing a job is not just difficult financially, it's difficult psychologically. Uh, I, I, I served as a lay pastor in my church and counseled, in some cases, individuals who'd lost jobs. It was interesting to see how many had weight gain or weight loss, how many marriages faltered, mm -hmm. faith faltered. It's a, uh, it's a very challenging aspect of, uh, of life in a society that has as much change and dynamism as our society, given its global nature, uh, has. And therefore, I, I think it's important for us as a society to find ways to help people be able to move through this process of losing a job in one industry that becomes outmoded mm -hmm. and finding a position in a new type of industry that, that is growing. We have to do that in a way that, that it does not cause financial and psychological distress. Uh, I happen to believe, uh, everyone has their own perspective on this, but that, that government training programs, which is, hey, we're gonna, you lost your job in the steel mill, we're going to teach you how to repair computers. Mm -hmm. And you go spend a year um, getting subsidized education repairing computers. I don't think that does a lot of good in most cases. Sometimes, yeah, but by and large, people are getting trained for jobs that also don't exist. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, and it's, it's two years to, you know, you have two years not to worry about anything because you're, you know, you're, you're going to school, but there's no job at the end of it either. And you end up, uh, you know, doing something altogether different. What, what we uh, proposed in our state and we're actually able to implement in a small way was this. We said if you'll hire someone to a company, if you'll hire anybody who's been out of work a year or more, we'll put, if you will, a, a $2,000 figure on their head which means that you as the hiring company can use up to $2,000 as a credit to train that person. I like the idea of letting the company that actually has a job get money to do the training so that people are being trained for an actual job. I'd like that number to be larger. Uh, I think we, we had uh, one-stop career centers where people who were out of work were able to go to a place every day. They had a computer. They had a carol. They could look up job opportunities. They could look up training opportunities, and we could connect them with businesses that wanted to hire them for real jobs and at the same time give them the training they'd need to carry out those jobs. I, I think something of that nature makes an awful lot of sense at, on the state-by-state -state level, perhaps even at the federal level, but I, I tend to favor those ideas that work best in states. And if they're working well in the state, uh, let other states copy them. Uh, if more funding is necessary, perhaps roll them out federally. But uh, by and large, I think we have to recognize that in a highly dynamic society, we have to uh, ease the path of people moving mm -hmm. from an employed position to one where they may no longer have their employment. And by the way, that's one aspect of, of health care reform I think is a good thing, which is making sure people don't lose insurance as they lose their job or change jobs. That's right. 